I was nine years old when I first jumped off 10 meter. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's brilliant. I used to see brilliant. Amazing. Brilliant. I had too many teeth in my mouth. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, a few weeks ago I put on my Instagram some video things that what should I do, what should I record for you guys, what would you like to see and one of them actually was to react to videos of, or photos of myself before my first Olympics in like 2008 which is now like 11 years ago because I'm getting ready for my fourth Olympic Games so I've now got in front of me lots of different videos that are on YouTube um, and photos of what I was like in 2008 so go have a little watch what is this? Before they were superstars. That was fun. Uh, well, I'm going to Beijing for the experience just to see what the whole Olympic experience is going to be going to be about. Are you good about the experience? Yeah, Tom, good. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh... In 2008, Tom Daly was starting to attract considerable media attention in his native Britain. We used to train in a squash court and that's what that was. It was a converted squash court with dry boards and stuff. And this is the old pool in Plymouth. Oh, gosh, don't I look young. At the Beijing Olympics, where he would be the country's youngest competitor and the youngest of any nationality outside the sport of swimming. I'm not a swimmer. Really, like a whirlwind this year since qualification for the Olympics. It's been oh, it. I was nine years old when I first jumped off 10 metre and it was terrifying. I was on the edge, like holding onto the railings and I just crawling to the end of the board almost. And when I, I had butterflies and it was terrifying. But once I did it once, you want to do it again and again and again. Well, the first time I saw him, he stood on the poolside crying and didn't actually dive at all. Um, and I made the great statement that I didn't think he would ever be a diver. Uh, luckily, I did see him actually get into the pool. Tom was training for three hours a day during school term time and more during the holidays, leaving limited time for other activities. I mean, we do make sure he doesn't miss out. He, um, when he's got friends... Oh, school, my God! His friends goes to the cinema. He doesn't miss out. He's got a lot of friends within the sport, all across the country, all across Europe, all across the world, and he's happy with it. So if he's happy with it, we're happy with it. You do miss out on lots of stuff, but then it's what you have to do to become an elite athlete, and if you want to succeed, you just have to sacrifice little things, but it's been worth it so far. Whoever edited this was definitely kind of trying to contradict what my dad just said. I didn't really miss out on things. What I meant was that I was you miss out on you do miss out on being able to eat whatever you want and be able to do whatever you want during the day because you know I have to train and I have to do all that. But at the same time, like I loved it. So come on now, editor. I've kind of had to grow up quite quickly because I'm always constantly with older people and like all the divers are older than me, so I just started to act like them. Uh, well, I'm going to Beijing for the experience just to see what the whole Olympic experience is going to be going to be about. And I'm not expecting anything when I go there. I'm just going out there hopefully to do a good performance and learn from anything that I do wrong or do good and take it forward to 2012. Oh, really lovely. Oh, dear. OK, what's next then? What's next? The countdown to the Summer Olympics continues on World Sport now as we take the plunge in Plymouth with Great Britain's 14-year-old diving sensation. It's a lot. Diving sensation. Didn't expect at all to be in this Olympics. I was more expecting London 2012. Although I'd worked hard for it thinking that I might have an outside chance, I didn't expect to be pre-selected at the first instance. The Olympics is going to be a massive challenge, but it's going to be so much fun and I've got nothing to lose out there. The fact that he himself for Daly's diligence has brought with it an astonishing rate of success. He was just 13 when crowned British number one in January of this year, the European Championships in Holland. I remember, I used to be able to do all those dives and just not even think about it. Like, when I was younger, I literally was able to stand on the end of the board and just know that I was going to land upright without even knowing how or why or what I needed to do. It just happened. I think it's because you, when, as you get older, you think too much. You worry about things and you worry about things going wrong. And you, Back then, it wasn't a care in the world. 
fantastic. That should be enough to clinch it for Great Britain. And you could be looking at the youngest European diving champion of all time. Going into the European Championships, I didn't expect anything really. I was just going there mainly for the experience, just to get... What am I talking about? All this experience, 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 experience. Although by now I am probably one of the most experienced divers out there. So, I guess it did help. A little bit. Big shock, but it was a really good experience. That victory immersed daily in the media spotlight. All those cameras. I couldn't do that right now. Imagine if I was training and all those cameras were there. Not a chance. <sighs> Have a look at this. We will. Who's that young lad? I like the What is that? <laughs> Yay! Give us a wave, Tom. What have you been up to these past few days? Training and that's pretty much it, training. You had a day out there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we went to the Great War on the 14th. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, nothing. Been pretty much just training. Yeah, just training. Yeah, but you went to the wall, didn't you? The Great Wall of China. That's classic 14 year old, isn't it? That, yeah, we dub it off. What have you been doing? Nothing. Just training. You went to the Great Wall of China. That's pretty damn cool. Just training. Give ourselves a slap. Went up with the cable cart and then came down in toboggan. So that was good. Yeah, how was the toboggan? Brilliant. Uh, are you brilliant? Brilliant. 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 <laughs> Here we are at Art and Craft School. Hey, Tom. Hello. <laughs> I used to be a right janner. I used to say, brilliant, amazing, brilliant. Wow. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, just finishing the last room. Gotta do it. Work in progress. Yeah, I've got to no. out the inside yet, so. No mistake so far. No. Always been into the rings, apparently. And so we're gonna see you smiling on the diving boards? Yeah, definitely. Winner. Mm -hmm. See you on there, Tom. Well done. I used to be like really innocent and cute and. Again, I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna have fun, I'm gonna smile, and it's gonna be great. Now I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be great. <laughs> He's cocky, supremely confident, and... Hang on a minute! Who's this reporter calling me cocky? Cocky! Who calls a 14-year-old little boy cocky? Cocky, confident, and extremely cool. I think they're just looking for words for alliteration there. Very cool. He's a 13-year-old prodigy who's mastered the complex physical and mental demands of the high board. Ten. Tom Daly was born to dive, and a large part of his life is now spent looking down from the intimidating height of the 10-meter board. <laughs> I'm in the board. That was good. Some diving videos now. I used to just literally hit the water with no splash. I'm too big for that now. Not so much on that one. Prelim as well! Save some! Only how's this one then? <laughs> oh my days. I literally, I tell you, I never used to even think about going in the water. It just happened. Well, I didn't expect to qualify for this Olympics. I was more looking forward to London 2012, so it was a bonus for me to qualify for this Beijing Olympics. So I'm just really looking forward to getting out there and just getting experience from it because that's all I want from this Olympics. I just want to go out there, have fun, see what it's going to be about, and then just uh, if I do something wrong in this Olympics, then learn from it. If I do something good, take that experience and take it into London 2012. I remind myself of Lady Gaga here. You know, the if there's 100 people in the room and 99 don't believe in you, but one doubt, you know, that, that quote. There can be 100 people in a room and 99 don't believe in you, but all you need is just for one person to believe. That. Is me here. It's all about the experience. If I do something bad, I'll learn from it. If I do something good, I'll learn from it. Well, it's always been my dream to win an Olympic medal, but I'm not expecting to win it here. I'd rather like to work a little bit harder going into London 2012 and see what can happen then. Oh, there you go. So don't worry about doing it now. Do it later. 2008, Tom? You did. Don't worry. Don't worry, your little self. You got all the experience you needed.
Well, in China, diving is quite a big sport. So, like walking around the streets, sometimes you do get people recognising you, and in the village as well, some of the Chinese staff. And also at the diving pool, there's been a few people recognising me. But it's it's kind of weird because when you're little and you always dream of being that person up there or famous, and it's 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 kind of weird to start becoming that and getting recognised because it's it's just really weird. You don't expect it to happen to you. Oh, I literally was a little baby. I was a little baby. They used to call me Baby Daily. I, I barely remember anything from those 2008 Olympics. It's kind of nuts. I do have a diary, actually, from each of the Olympics. Maybe that could be a fun YouTube video to read out my diary from, like, each Olympics. Or, like, certain parts of it, anyway. That could be fun. Now we're on to some photos. Oh. My. Goodness. That is kind of crazy. Look how much smaller I was in 2008 compared to 2016. Like, it's kind of nuts. That is like what you call a strength and conditioning program. Also, probably the fact that I'm 22 there and only 14, and the other one, eight years apart. But, geez, I piled on some pounds. Oh, I did something wrong there, didn't I? Oh, no, no. Yeah, I used to be quite dramatic and like, you know, really let my coach know what I knew that I'd done something wrong because I always felt like I had to like let him know like, oh, I did something wrong there and I knew what it was. So you don't have to tell me. Kind of annoying when I think about it, but anyway. Next one. Oh, those are some gnashes, aren't they? That is why I have braces. I had too many teeth in my mouth. Look how many teeth I had in my mouth. Oh, and those eyes and those ears. And that forehead. My God. I've still got a big forehead, it's alright. Nothing changes. I still cannot get over that photo, like, that I look so dramatically different compared to what I looked like in 2008 and there. It's kind of nuts. But, I mean, I look like a different person. Well, I think. Maybe I don't. I don't know, maybe I'm being a bit too dramatic. But I think I look like a different person. Oh, <laughs> look how little I was. The thing I was standing on the edge of the board, I was just so buzzing that I got time off of school. I was like, yeah, I'm not going, going to the last couple of weeks of school, I'm going to Beijing. Look, my little wrist guards. I was still ripped for a 14 year old. That was the opening ceremony of 2008. I can remember being so, so buzzing to think that we were about to compete in the Olympic Games, the first one ever. I had stuff all over my face. I was sweaty, it was hot. We had to sit in like this gymnastics arena for like 40 minutes. No, actually 40 minutes, that was an underestimate. No, three hours or something stupid like that while we were waiting to like for our country to be called out. It was one of the most amazing things to walk out and hear the cheers and just be part of that atmosphere of an Olympic opening ceremony is so much fun. That is what you call sassy. Oh my goodness, look, I've got my hip popped to the side. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <sighs> Don't do that again, Tom. Oh my God, I, I literally still can't get over how big my forehead is. I mean, I've got a big forehead, yeah, I get it. But like, look, even back then I had a massive forehead. Oh, gosh, absolutely nuts. Well, that was a little bit of a blast in the past there. You know, me from 2008, it's kind of, it's kind of weird looking back and like thinking about what I knew then, what I know now and like what I would tell myself. The 2008 stuff, I need to give me advice. Because I remember being so carefree and like so excited about everything and so looking forward to competing and doing all that kind of stuff and I just enjoyed it and didn't worry about what anyone else thought and I need a bit more of that. Maybe I should take some advice from him. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, leave a comment below, tell me what you thought and in the meantime don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. I'll see you later.